But one thing that really stands out for me is a few tournaments a year, you have a ton of competitors. You know, junior gold, thousands of bowlers are bowling this tournament. And, you know, that's the one thing that really amazes me is at a young level, at a, at a young age, uh, bowlers are competing against thousands and thousands of competitors at certain tournaments. And you really have big moments, you know, it, with that many people. You know, on tour, we're used to competing with about 150 players. Now, yeah, they are the best bowlers in the world, but, you know, that's a whole different beast when you have to think, I got to be the best bowler out of 2,000 people. So I think that's one thing with uh, the difference between youth bowling, youth tournaments and professional tournaments is you know, the amount of people you see at some of these tournaments can, can be a bit overwhelming. And also, you know, I, I mentioned it before, the, the variety of formats and patterns. Uh, team Masters limits you to two balls. You know, there's so many different things that I like as it, that I wish we seen on the professional level just because it, it gives you, you know, at a young age, you get to, you know, see things that you might not expect. And uh, I think it's a really good preparation leading up in a professional level. What made you want to take bowling seriously and commit to the sport? So when I was little, I was always involved in the sport, especially with my family. But growing up, I played a lot of different sports, just trying to find my niche and like where I fit in best. And throughout all the years and with everything I tried, bowling was the one that was all, that I always stuck with and it was always a part of my life. So as I grew older and grew out of my other sports, it just clicked that this was where I belonged and this was what I wanted to do. Honestly, my family, my family, especially my grandpa, pushed me really hard to be better at not only bowling, but I was also playing soccer at the time. And when I realized that I could make not only a living, but a career out of bowling, when I decided that I wanted to be serious with it and go throughout college and possibly a professional career. The commitment to bowling for me was was quite easy. At a young age, uh, my father was a professional bowler. Uh, I grew up in a bowling alley. I was pretty much, you could call it, a, a bowling alley rat. You know, pretty much as soon as I was able to, to lift the ball with two hands, I was up on the lane trying to bowl, uh, just enjoying it, you know, enjoying being a kid, uh, doing something that I, I enjoyed and watched my father do growing up. So, uh, you know, my father really had a big, big say in that. Uh, I wanted to be like my dad. He was my hero growing up. And, and uh, so being, being pretty good at it at a young age helped as well. And uh, watching my father be so successful and, you know, a big fan favorite for the crowd. Uh, it was all of that combined just really uh, wanted me to commit to the sport of bowling and, you know, because it's something that I love. So what actually got me started in bowling was my family. My grandparents ended up starting me up in a league when I was around roughly about five or six years old. And I know I used to be one of those little bowling center rats. Like I used to run around in the bowling centers at such a young age. I, we actually used to have a nursery here and I used to be uh, kept in the nursery and while my mom or like my grandpa was bowling league, I used to always try and sneak out of the nursery to try and go watch. Eventually I got started in the league around, I want to say I was six and um, I really didn't have the passion for it and competing is what really sparked it for me and that's what made me learn a lot. Explain some of your hardships and how you rebound off rough experiences. So there's actually been plenty of hardships for me and I'd have to say one of them would have to be Junior Bowl 2018. I was in match play which they take the top 16 and I ended up winning my first match and I lost my second match which put me in the losers bracket. And I ended up having to bowl, as some of you may know, I ended up having to bowl Spencer Robart. So I needed a double and a tenth to win. And Pretty good, it's gonna have a chance. I got the first yeah! one, but then I dead yanked the second one, and I left the three nine ten to lose. Really, I was disappointed, and I was just overwhelmed by everything. Um, you then get to a point where you just feel like you're not good enough, and you start to feel like nothing's going right for you and for me I've had those moments plenty of times but that one really set a lot of emotions in um, I was very upset I was upset the whole flight back home I didn't bowl for a couple days I was very down on myself because as a bowler you're gonna have your you're gonna have your good days and your bad days and majority of them is gonna be bad and you're just gonna have to grind out games and just grind out every spare you can get but there's going to be some of those days where it just really frustrates you and 
Although I've had many hardships, I have learned a lot from them. And it's helped me grow as a bowler. And I look back on those moments and I just really look at the old me and it just, it really shocks me because I watch old videos and I think, wow, that's really how I used to be. And that's really how I used to act. First off, Brandon is a phenomenal bowler. Um, great kid. Um, works harder on his game than almost anybody out there. If there's any one thing that I think he could he could work on, uh, that would be the mount game and the ability to uh, move on past the bad shot. I've, I've watched him improve in that category over the years. I think there's still some room for improvement there. Um, and just the ability to, to zone out everything else that's going on. And uh, again, he's made fantastic strides in that area. And his, his physical game is just amazing. Um, I think when he's able to tie in that mental component, there's not going to be um, any stopping him. What do you think is holding Brandon back from getting better? Um, I think it's a mental game. I mean, honestly, right now he has all the physical capabilities in the world. I just think it's a mental game, and I feel like he's so easy to get upset and to blame himself for things, and I think that's something that he needs to work on, especially if he wants to be a successful collegiate bowler and PBA bowler. I think that you need to have a strong mental game in order to be successful, and if you ask the best of the best, yeah, they do get mad, yeah, they do get upset, but they still know how to rebound and bounce back from it. The one thing uh, that would help him and actually a lot of youth bowlers out there, uh, and this came straight from Dr. Dean, is, is the uh, carrying the negativity and being too hard on yourself after a shot. Um, or after a bad shot, you know, when you, when you say to yourself or you're thinking to yourself something negative, you know, I can't hit my target, I can't do this, you're seven to ten times more likely to not be able to. Um, the crazy part is, is when you actually vocally say it to yourself or you vocally say it out, out loud, that seven to ten times is, uh, you know, 70 to 100 times as you Something like that. I don't remember the exact number, but it's astronomically larger when you fold the pies. So when you're out there bowling, don't ever come back and say, I can't hit my target. And especially don't say it out loud. Is bowling more about you versus someone else or you versus yourself? In bowling, it's me versus myself. In a, in a sense, there's no defense in bowling, and you just have to take it as it is what it is, and whatever happens, happens. What do you think about defense and bowling? I'm not a fan of it. Not a fan of it. No. I think, uh, I think offense, trying to carve the lane or do something that, to make you a little bit more productive as a player is fine. Um, but I think if you look at it in any way to uh, destroy the pattern or make yeah. the pattern unplayable for the players, I'm, I'm not a fan of that at all. What would you consider uh, playing defense in bowling? Um, using too much surface in the wrong part of the lane. Okay. Um, I think I think that's defense. I don't think that's um, I don't think that's really sportsmanship. I'm, I'm, okay. I, I'm, I believe in sportsmanship. And the reality is that I think you're on a TV show, you're you're at league, 
you're bowling a match, whatever it is you're doing, whether you're at a JBT or you're at a Tough Shots or whatever, and you're getting ready to bowl a match, um, you want to win with integrity. You want to right. you want to go out and out execute your opponent. And I think if you out execute your opponent, then uh, you deserve one. Okay. I think the PBA, the PWBA, all the governing bodies of bowling understand it's a problem. They're reducing the amount of time for practice. Do you think it's for that reason? Or? Absolutely, it's for that reason. They're trying to hold up the integrity of the pattern. Okay. And uh, it's very difficult to be a lane man. And you put a pattern down and you watch players destroy that pattern uh, by playing it incorrectly or by trying to uh, be defensive yeah. to slow the pace down for a certain type of bowler. You imagine a guy who who likes to play or is, is proficient at playing you know, straighter lines, and now you have a guy with a big rev rate that gets in that straighter line zone where you want to play and throws a ball with a ton of surface on it, chewing that pattern up, forcing yeah. you left because he knows he's better at playing left than you are. Do you think too much defense could cause um, a disadvantage in your own offense? I think it can. Okay. I, I, it, I, I think I think what happens sometimes is they they make them unplayable for both sides. Gotcha. And, and uh, I, listen, I, I think our sport we have a sport of gentlemen and ladies. And uh, I think if we approached our sport more like golf, and it's a gentleman sport, and you you rely on your ability and your creativity and your uh, your willingness to whatever it takes to score and just fuck out execute go beat them okay When you first saw your bowling, did you ever think you'd be the bowler you are today? Absolutely not. Um, when I first started, I did it more for fun, and then as I grew into the sport and realized just how difficult it is, I figured winning those types of tournaments was just in my wildest dreams. Um, it wasn't until I really buckled down into the sport and learned that visualization can be key for things like that that I really started to believe in myself. But when I was little, those really were just what I considered to be my wildest dreams. I never would have imagined myself there when I was eight or nine years old. What made Caroline the bowler she is today? Dedication, hard work. She's got a, a fire uh, to be the best that she could be. And uh, she works really hard at it. We spend you know, 
couple hours a day in the bowling alley. And she does so while maintaining her schoolwork. I mean, she comes home. She's up very late at night getting her homework all done. Um, but again, it's it's that dedication, that work ethic, um, and, and and her mental game. Her mental game is um, it's second to none. Dr. Dr. Dean had a big part of that. Um, you'll see when you when you watch her bowl, you, you look at her her history and so on. It's match play. Match play is where she is uh, incredibly strong. She has an ability to you know zone in and, and just really um, put everything out of her mind and, and it's this pinpoint laser focus uh, when she's bowling in match play. Um, if you actually look at her, her averages, um, she averages almost 20 minutes higher during match play than qualifying. And, um, and again, that's just the, the mental focus um, and she works hard on that part of her game as well. You know, she does a lot of, of uh, just pretty high-tech stuff. She does some brain training with a, uh, uh, a local person here. They put these electrodes up to her head, and she has to be able to put her mind in a certain state that uh, uh, Miss Tracy, who's you know her instructor there, wants her to be in. So. That, that has been a tremendous help, but it, again, her mental game and, and her work. And she works just as hard on that mental game as, as her physical. Explain the feeling of having accomplishments such as Junior Team USA, winning Junior Gold, winning Team Masses, and various other titles. So I don't think I'll ever be able to describe the feeling in the moment because it was so incredible. But looking back on it and just the feeling that all of your hard work paid off, all of the days that you didn't want to go to the bowling alley and you didn't want to go work out, but you did anyway, you did it for that moment and you worked so hard to get there and it's like this rush and release of emotions, it's truly incredible and it's just knowing that all the time and effort that you've put in was for something bigger than yourself. When did you realize you had a superstar athlete? She's always been very passionate about the sport. Uh, but I have to say, really, at the for very first SYC out in Reno, uh, we flew out early. We spent some time uh, with Dr. Dean ahead of time, so she got to meet Dr. Dean for the first time. Who's been a huge influence in her life and uh, that tournament she really seemed to have after the time with him actually she really seemed to have uh, a different level of fire and when she won uh, her whole world changed uh, she became even more focused even more dedicated That day forward, we were in the bowling alley two hours a day, every day. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say Reno, uh, that very first SYC was her turning point. Where has bowling taken you? So it's taken me all over the United States. I've been fortunate enough to visit so many states that I can't actually remember the exact number, but uh, it's opened my eyes to some of my favorite places, Reno, Nevada, Las Vegas. I always enjoy traveling there for tournaments. And I've been so fortunate to get to experience so many different cities and climates and really get to explore the United States while still doing what I love. Caroline has bowled in tournaments from North Carolina all the way to California. As a parent, how do you allow your kid to compete considering the finances, time, and energy? For her, it, it's, a, it's a dream for her. It's what she wants to do. And as a parent, 
um, I really, you know, do my best to try to, to help her achieve those goals. To be honest, when it comes to the, the finances, um, I prefer not to know because I really don't want to know how much money I spend uh, on taking her around the country. Uh, but I will say this, she's rewarded me every step of the way. Um, and uh, it's just been so much fun to watch. So, bowling is just, just a great movie. At what point did you decide you want to go all in for bowling and bowl as many tournaments as possible? So the real eye-opener for me was 2012 after Junior Gold when I learned that I was not as good as I thought I was and it really opened my eyes into how much work you have to put into the sport and how much dedication you need to have to be the top level player that I had always dreamed of being. And so that was really the turning point when I decided it was time to go all in, practice as much as I could, and go to as many tournaments as I possibly could to get as much experience for my future. And she works really hard in her game. So let's give her another round of applause. Congratulations. What makes a youth bowling challenging? Whew. Youth bowling, uh, what a challenging topic. Uh, I remember you know, bowling as a youth, as a, youth, as a kid. Uh, there was many difficult things about youth bowling and bowling in general. But uh, one of the main things that I believe makes youth bowling so, so challenging is those are your younger years. Those are the years that you're trying to gather knowledge, gain experience, you know, because you really don't have much experience as a kid. So those, those years can, can be quite challenging mentally and physically. Um, you know, on the physical side, we're all going through changes as a kid. You know, we all, we all hit growth spurts here and there. So, uh, you know, physical changes can really make it difficult, but I think the main thing is uh, the mental side of the game at a young age. Uh, I remember personally for me was a big struggle. You know, my frust I get frustrated all the time. Uh, so not, not only as you're trying to gather and gain knowledge and experiences, you're really learning how to accept the game on a mental side of it. You know, really uh, learn to keep your frustrations in. And, and um, you know, also youth bowling, you have a lot of variables. You know, you have a lot of different formats, uh, a lot of different patterns. You know, we see some, I've seen some crazy oil patterns uh, at some youth tournaments that, you know, we really don't quite see on the PBA level. So, you know, the the wide span of, of patterns that you see, the formats, you know, and the talent level is just as great at the youth level as it is at the professional level. So I believe, you know, all those really can make youth bowling challenge, but, you know, who doesn't like a good challenge? What makes youth bowling challenging? So I think what makes youth bowling really challenging is that it's an individual sport and a lot of uh, kids growing up participate in team sports but when you're out on the lanes you have to be able to draw the line between friends and competitors and that can be really difficult because you never want to hurt anybody's feelings and of course you're going to be everybody's best friend but you're also there to win and I think it can be really difficult to grasp that difference and grow up and understand that it's okay to make that separation in your mind. The amount of talent nowadays and before that was in youth bowling is amazing. You're not, a lot of people don't really see that nowadays, but when you go to these big tournaments like Junior Bowl and Team Masters and sometimes even Team Trials, the amount of talent that you see is just hard to believe and that makes, I think for me, hopeful for the future and what's going to be in the future of our sport because of the talent that there is and the type of hard working youth bowlers that we have nowadays who go into the bowling alley every single day and the gym and work on their mental game, I think that's very important as well. What do you think uh, bowlers should do whenever they get up before a match in a five time minute practice round? I think it's important to um, first of all get loose before that five or ten minute. Make okay. sure you're stretching, make sure you're getting prepared to bowl so that your first couple shots aren't at three miles an hour trying to get yeah. loose because you want to get as much information right. as you can. So I think it's important to shoot a couple spares. What I, what I encourage people to do is their first three or four shots of practice, 
shoot the ten pin. Okay. Because you're getting loose anyway. Okay. So shoot the ten pin. Make sure you know the angles you need to use to make the ten pin, and make sure you're comfortable with that. And then just gain information. I think you want to find out where the lane will hook, where there's hold, uh, and you want to figure out the angles that are best for you to attack the pocket. Okay. And uh, once you figure out the pattern and where you need to play um, in that five or ten minutes, then throw a couple of different bowling balls to figure out which one gets off the lane properly. Because how the ball exits the back of the pin deck yeah. determines how much you're going to carry. Any advice for youth bowlers? Youth bowlers, oh, some advice for you guys. Uh, you know, the first thing that my father always told me as a kid was to have fun. I know it's cliche and it's really simple to say, but you, know, you really need to enjoy the sport, have fun doing it, you know, because there's a lot of great things that comes with bowling. Not only the competition and the competitive nature, but you know, the friendships that you make, the relationships that you make throughout traveling you know, throughout your state, or you might get to travel through the country, you know, through the world. So really have fun with it, make the best of every experience because you know, it, it's, it's gonna be a long journey. You know, if you're, if you're wanting to be a professional, you know, there's gonna be a lot of peaks and valleys. So, you know, try and have fun, Take, make the best out of every moment when you can bowl. And also, try and gather as much knowledge as you can as early as you can. I was very hard-headed at a, as a young, at a, at a young age, I was very hard-headed. But I wish, looking back now, whenever I was 16, 17, 18 years old, I wish I wouldn't have got so frustrated. And I wish I would have paid a little more attention to the sport you know, on the mental side of it, because with the mental composure, you know, it can really make for a much easier picture on the physical side of the game. But most importantly, you gotta have fun. What can bowlers do to keep the sport growing? I think that bowlers can continue to make people aware of the scholarships and the amount of hard work and just opportunities that bowling can give, not only their children, but adults as well. I think that people aren't very aware of the fact that there's collegiate bowling and there's professional bowling. And I think, yeah, they see it on ESPN every now and then, but they don't really realize the amount of work that these players put in to be the best of the best. And I think that bowlers need to continue making people aware, but also need to continue building those friendships and relationships with people because that will not only grow bowling as a whole, but that will grow the community and what's going on within the community of bowling as well. And I think that we just need to love on each other as much as possible, especially during the hard time right now, and just continue to make people aware and bowl tournaments and get out as much as we possibly can, but be safe at the same time. What bowlers can do to continue bowling the sport is bowling some of the Bowl for Life tournaments or even some of the SYCs, even the local tournaments, because how we grow the sport is just meeting new friends and just meeting people that become family and over the years that's been the greatest part of my bowling career is just meeting all the friends and watching the sport of bowling grow. If you look at Junior Gold in a sense, like when I started bowling Junior Gold there was maybe only 2,000 bowlers and looking at last year's Junior Gold we had almost 6,000 people competing and it just shows you the sport as a whole is growing and it's getting better and everyone's getting their name out there and I just think it's the coolest thing in the world finally watching bowling come together and grow as a whole. This is a really tough question and one that I've thought about a lot recently um, but what I think is the biggest factor in this that can really help grow the sport is when you're at tournaments or you're at league to really take the young bowlers kind of under your wing, like um, a sibling type of relationship, and help them through their early months and years, where it's easy, where it would be easy for them to quit, and help them find the love that you have for the sport. I think that would really help keep them engaged and grow the sport as the years go on. Ooh, we want to grow this sport as bowlers. There's many, many things that I believe we can do as bowlers, uh, especially for a sport that we love. And that's the first thing. I think uh, to grow the sport, you have to love the sport first off. You know, I've loved this since I was a very little kid, and uh, it's a big passion of mine. And when you're passionate about something, you really, that helps grow and push off onto others. Uh, the other thing is to 
really promote the sport. You know, not only you know telling your friends and stuff like that, but giving back. You know, I believe giving back is a big thing that can really help grow the sport. Um, you know, being a professional bowler, anytime I can give back to the youth uh, to really help them. You know, gain some experience or gain some knowledge because you know the youth, it's where it all starts with is the youth. You know, because these, these are the people that are going to be bowling for many, many years. And, uh, you know, social media is such a beautiful thing nowadays. You know, I believe bowling deserves, you know, to be in the limelight. So I believe with, uh, with love and, you know, passion for the sport and doing it as a whole, because we are a bowling family, I really think uh, all that can really share the love of the sport and, you know, really grow upon others. Bowling is not just a ball rolling down the lane and hitting some pins. Bowling is a sport that allows a future for people to create memories, friends, travel experiences, and more. It is the same sport that gets us to work as hard as we can to perfect our craft. It is what causes us to get up and practice to continue to get better and better and better. We do this to achieve satisfaction for ourselves. We need other bowlers to fill frames, roll some strikes, and win. We do what we can to learn and get better and improve as much as we can. That is all because of old.